blinded by greed, young and tender, not yet planting a seed. Time passed, days lost, one hope lost for our generation's future. Children are the future of every nation, and the guarantee to the continuity of human existence relies on them. It is therefore believed that investing in the child is investing in the future. Hence, any country or nation which considers its future and continuity critical gives the best to its children for a brighter and better future. This investment entails observing and respecting the rights of the child with key focus on education, which is one of the most critical. To this end, Many believe that the society is a reflection of the impact of the school on its citizens and, by implication, the impact on the teachers. One of former presidents of the United States of America, Franklin D. Roosevelt's popular phrases says, We cannot always build the future for our youths, but we can build the youths for our future. And in building the youths, education becomes key. In education, the role of the teacher is central and indispensable. No wonder then, a teacher is believed to have a great level of influence on the students, whose performance is in fact believed to be reflected in the quality of societal life. Research by the National Center for Education Statistics reveals that an average teacher will affect at least 3,000 students during their career life. 54% of students say a teacher has helped them overcome a difficult situation in life, while 86% have a positive effect on them. As such, 75% of students see teachers as mentors and role models, with 83% testifying that teachers have boosted their confidence and self-esteem, thus revealing that teachers have a great level of influence on students, which translates into the quality of the society we see today. And by implication, poor quality of teachers will reflect on poor quality of the society. We don't have a good teacher for mathematics don't. And that is why we have failures in mass. Because we don't have a good teachers, especially our mass. Ma like, we have issues in mass. Not as if we are not intelligent, but we don't have good teachers in mathematics. That is why we have failure in mathematics. Because so our mass teacher is like, he's not open to us. And when he's not open to us, we can't really communicate. Or like share our personal feelings because we find it difficult to cooperate when in the area of mathematics do so the teacher we have is not too good it's not too good like and he's not the only one most of the teachers sometimes when he enters the class he, all he just do is abuse us abuse us call us names different type of names and just copy the notes some teachers will even come to the class punish us unnecessary even if, uh, the, any little thing we do, they will flog us anyhow. Some even give us marks. Then when we go home and report, it will not be an issue between the students and the teachers in the school. And which some teacher, because of that, fail some students because they reported him or her to our parents. And the school, the school management, we end up doing nothing. And you know teachers, they cover up for themselves. They all blame us students. They all, they like, they say that we are the fault, we are this and that. So they cover up for themselves. Even when you speak up, they won't do anything. The problem we have is the teachers. Our problem is the teachers. And the uncontrolled habits. They do do anything they want to do, but when they cut you, they will just start beating. And all the male teachers that don't have manners, yeah, not trained. Some teachers are not free to the students. They can come to the class and just discipline or flog you, then they will go. Even sometimes they will give students no to copy, they can't copy it. And they will not teach. Especially our math teacher herself, she will just give notes, no solving, nothing, nothing, just notes. And once she comes to the class, she will just pick, pick people that she don't like, they will go outside. In mathematics now, they'll come while they're teaching. The uncle will like, will be speaking to everybody, you, but to try to get what he's saying, it will be hard. And if you like, assume to ask you a question, I didn't get it. You'll be singing a song for you that you are going to fail. 
and you are trying to turn back down, you know that you will not fail. You will sing your, you will like, you will continue singing it. So I don't like that. We don't have good teachers at all. The only teachers we can be able to manage is our government teacher and our literature teacher. That's the only teachers we are able to manage. If not, all of them does not know anything, especially our mathematics teacher. And if you, if you complain to them, they might expel you or suspend you. Because they'll be saying, you are going around telling people that they don't have good teachers, why you are the one that don't want to learn. And you, you want to learn, but you don't have the chance to learn. Because at times, if some teachers, they know how to teach, you, but they'll, they'll be insulting you instead of doing the right thing. If you want a student to learn, if the student do any wrong thing, you are supposed to flog the student and draw the student closely. But instead of that, they will just flog you, condemn you, and leave you like that. In addressing such ills, many believe that teaching is a profession that should be motivated by passion or desire to impart knowledge and make a difference. However, if that is the case with teaching profession in many parts of Nigeria, the FCT inclusive. For some, teaching profession is embraced as an easy getaway from joblessness or idleness, especially after graduation and when white collar jobs are not forthcoming. Teaching should not be a profession where people come in as a stopgap because that's what you see today. You come into town, is there? The, the best way to start is to find a school and start teaching you. So you go and be a teacher within that time. Then you are now using your salary there to look for other jobs to go and do. And when they recruit you, there's no training to turn you into a teacher. Only recently, the National Teachers Council, I think, or something like that, is trying to do some certification pro program. I don't know how effective that has been. And there is no room and dating schools to ensure that their teachers have this certification at least. You know, so I think that the issue of recruitment of teachers should be something that is done with utmost sincerity, with a lot of seriousness. With you need to put a lot into it. Because once you get a teacher in, it is not very easy to get the problem they will create out. And once I have entered a school before, and you can't be in all the classes at once. As you're trying to check one there, another one is causing problem at the other end. So you must be careful who you employ as a teacher. You must give necessary training. When you are a teacher, there are a lot of things. The school business is a special kind of business. A business where you have the user who experiences the service, but that user is not the one who pays for the service. So the user sometimes may have what they want, different from what the payer wants. And you must satisfy these two people. So teacher should know how to interact with young humans. Because the children must see you first as a friend before they are willing to learn from you. Then how do you juxtapose that with an overbearing parent? that is asking you for what is impossible. Teachers feel this all the time. So the job of a teacher is not for a weakling. It's one of the most difficult jobs you can think of on earth. Teaching is the only job where you work in the daytime and then you take work home to do at night so that the work of the next day will be done. Teaching is the only job where you are on holiday but you are working assiduously so that the work that is ahead of you during the, when the school resumes can be done effectively. So teaching is not something for lazy people. It's not a stopgap. On another hand, the low quality of students being produced from public schools on a yearly basis is attributed to the lack of interest, training, and passion on the part of the teachers. As there are more testimonies exposing the factors responsible for this particularly in the FCT, the male teachers are not appropriate with us. They lack training. Why for the female when they come, they're just giving us pressing for making calls, doing all sorts of these things. Like our civic uncle now sometimes, 
he's, he's just like don't understand anything about children. He cannot let us. He can't let us share our problems. When we are trying to do it on our own. Now uh, he will saying like we are ganging up against him. That we cannot do this to him. He was like you can enjoy out of anger and ignorance. He can do anything to the student. So we just maintain ourselves, copy notes. Sometimes if you are reading, they will tell you read in your mind. You are disturbing them, something like that. You will not be able to talk to your fellow colleague. Maybe you want to ask your fellow colleague that he should teach you this thing. Because in the in the school we always teach ourselves, not the teacher teaching us. Since when I've been in this school, it's only government and literature have I've been learning. I've not learned anything in this school. And I've been paying my school fees all by myself. Am I paying the school fees for free or to learn? And they always say government school don't pay money. Why we used to pay? They always used to say we don't pay, we don't pay, we don't pay. And me, I assure myself that we used to pay. We don't go to school for free. The teachers that we have, some of them are not properly educated. And some teachers do come to school, just sign and then go back home to relax. And some teachers don't even enter the class. And so when they enter, they, are, they can't even copy the note on the board. They give, us, they give it to us students to copy the note on the board. And they just sit down. So, so when they enter the class, they, they just, what they do is press their phone, make calls, go on Facebook, Instagram, where they give us, we, the student, the notes to copy. And some don't even explain. They just do anything they want. At the end, we we'll have failures. And it will not be that we students are not serious. Why is the teachers that the fault is actually from? Because they don't, they don't, I don't think, some don't even have lesson plan. Like they don't even plan their lesson. They just come and do whatever they want and they'll just go out of the class. And some even come, they bully us, some teachers. They flog us anyhow. Some even insult us, call us different kind of names. But when we try to, to report, the school management will end up not doing anything. And that is why when we report to our parents, there was issue in the school that a boy reported an issue to his father and his father came to school and fought the teacher. And they, they wanted to give the boy sus, um, sus, sus, um, yes. Why actually it, the, the fault was from the teacher? because they, they flog us anyhow. Some teachers, each subject may decide to give projects, so they will ask us to pay for it. But some teachers, like they want us to buy all their textbook. And it's not easy because some parents can't really afford it. And some teachers do fail us because of the textbook. And not everybody can afford the money because each subject wants to have its textbook and workbook. And the money is, 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 not, is not easy. It's not easy because all fingers are not equal. But they're making it compulsory for us to buy the textbook. And some teachers, by the end of the day, they will end up not using the textbook. The only thing they will use is the workbook. Then we will not ask ourselves, why then do we buy the textbook? Because most of the questions from the exam that we have written, apart from FCT, are not even in the textbook. But they do force us to buy the textbook. Then we will not be asking ourselves, why the reason for the buying of the textbook? And our fingers are not equal. Not everyone can afford it. Corruption, stakeholders say, is responsible for all of this. Corruption is responsible for everything bad in this country. It has permeated every system, every nook and cranny in our society. And in fact, people rate themselves better by how corrupt they are and how easily they can perpetrate corruption. In fact, you get money through corruption in this country and your society, they hail you and worship you for crumbs. It is corruption that makes people hire the wrong teacher. It is corruption that makes it impossible for these schools to take care of their facilities. If you ask them now, they will tell you that government does not give them enough money to maintain these things. And if you trace it to where the money was debited from, you will find out that that money was enough from there. But because of corruption, they have also set up a system 
that allows people to take the money, take from it before they pass it to the next person. They call it make something, uh, make something available for the boys. There are a lot of government programs that I question, like the uh, feeding program, the school feeding program. I was wondering, why do you have to pay this money to certain people or organization before they pay to the cooks? You collected BVN of those people who are cooks and the caterers, all of them. Why don't you wire this money straight to their account from the CBN? Why don't you wire this money so that you can pay the supervisor and pay whoever should monitor whether they are delivering the food or not? Most of these people don't even deliver the food. Government does not know or it does not even care. It's all because of corruption. And when you have collected your own, how can you supervise me again? I mean, when you give somebody 75 naira to feed a child or two children in a day, knowing fully well that a normal plate of food cannot be less than 300 naira, how are you going to go and meet that person and say, have you cooked the food? What's the quality of the food? So, corruption is everywhere. The school system suffers the impact of corruption most. Is it not corruption that is causing somebody to say, I'm coming to your school? Though. If you don't take care of them, they write a bad report about you, irrespective of what they see on ground. Is it not corruption? Is it not corruption that makes you look at somebody who is a bet better teacher, but because that person has not paid you money for recruitment, you leave the person and recruit the one who paid you money? So I'm going to work for you to earn money and I have to pay you first to get the job. When I get the job, what do you think I'm going to do? Recover my money by any means necessary. So that's corruption. It is corruption that will make a teacher come to the class, knowing fully well that at the end of the month he is going to be paid. But he will come to the class, dump note on the children, sit down, eat granite, and leave the class. He doesn't care. Then that teacher turns around and says, Come and pay extra more fee so that I will teach you what you ought to have done at the right time when they paid you for. And then because you didn't teach them where exam comes, you say, come and pay. In fact, there's a school I went. They call it my practice fee. Students should come and pay my practice fee. And I told one of the teachers, I said, oh, God, this, this thing as you, they call them so. You know they feel anyhow. I say, my brother, now so we see him, oh, man, God survived. It is so normal. Nobody's conscience is pricked. If every nook and cranny you see the corruption. Everywhere you turn, corruption say hello. Everywhere you go, corruption say I'm here. It has destroyed the school system. We have to figure out a way to wage holistic war on corruption. And that's going to take a lot of sacrifice from even individuals. Because what I have noticed is that in Nigeria, we want the country to be good. But I want you to stop doing your bad things, but I should continue my good things. I mean, my own bad things. So what is bad is bad based on who does it. If it benefits me, it's opportunity. If it doesn't, it's corruption. We should change that definition. And we should take it on headlong without fixing, reducing corruption to a minimal level in this country. We won't go anywhere. For sustainable development to take place in Nigeria in order for the citizen to enjoy a better life and perform optimally, certain wrongs must be fixed from the foundation. If you were going to be a patient in the hospital, what extent would you go to hire a doctor? They say when the doctor makes a mistake, in the theater, only one person dies. But when the teacher makes a mistake in the class, an entire generation, and even more than one generation perishes. Why? Because they say lack of knowledge makes the people perish. So school owners, school administrators, agencies and ministries in charge of education should shun things, every triviality from the process of recruitment of teachers. Let's treat it like you would recruit a doctor. A teacher should be screened. A teacher who does not have enough knowledge to be recruited should be sent to a training school 
and should be properly trained and that person should come back. I had the issue of uh, the governor of Kaduna State, Malam Nasiru Erufai, sacking some teachers because they could not pass a primary six test. And people were saying, eh, he's so heartless. What is going to happen to them now? And then you turn around and say the economy is not productive. You have a teacher who doesn't know enough, who doesn't have the adequate skill, trying to train another person. Do you think the person will ever exceed the level of that teacher? Our best should be in education. Our highest investment should be in education. You see, I can tell you that in fact, I've come across some empirical research that have stated that the level of violence in any society has a link with the level of education of the members of that society. The higher you are truly educated, the less likely you are, you are, you are to go into any violence or crime. Because you think of the implications. But where the education standard and level is very low, people don't know much. They don't think beyond the normal uh, biological reasoning, which is eat or be eaten. Survival of the fittest. So we need to focus on improving our education. Human capital development is key to any economy.